Yeah, I'm very happy to introduce our second speaker, which is uh, Henri Lefebvre. He's uh, currently postdoc at the University uh, of Trier uh, in the group of uh, Martin Schmidt. He received his PhD at uh, Universita di Bologna, um, and his research interests are mostly in uh, optimization under uncertainty and decomposition methods for large-scale uh, applications. And today he will talk about adjustable robust optimization. Thanks, uh, thanks, Yanis, for the introduction. Thanks also for the invitation. I'm really happy to present in this uh, robust optimization webinar. So this uh, talk is about using column generation in column and constraint generation uh, algorithms for two-stage robust optimization or adjustable robust optimization. This is a joint work with Martin Schmidt and Johannes Turov, which are also uh, both in uh, Trier. OK, so let's start with some context. I, I guess this is clear for everyone in this community. But anyway, we are dealing with uncertain parameters. And we are featuring, uh, we are studying problems which feature a two-stage decision process, where you have here and now decisions. These are the x variables that you have to take before you can observe the uh, uncertain parameters. And wait and see decisions, which are the y in this talk, which you take at the later instance uh, when you actually can observe the uncertain parameters. So if we take a robust viewpoint uh, on this case, we consider then an uncertainty set, which is a set of scenarios. And we uh, can model this problem as a min max mean uh, problem, where the first minimization problem over x uh, tells you that you want to take the best here and now decision. The max identifies the worst case, and then uh, the mean over y takes the best uh, wait and see decision. OK, so these are the, the problems that uh, we are considering here. Um, in this talk, we will uh, specialize y to be a mixed integer linear problem. OK. Uh, so here's the outline of my talk. And the first place, I will uh, describe the standard column and constraint generation algorithm. Then we'll discuss its main uh, limitations. Um, and then we will show how we can embed uh, column generation inside of it to uh, eliminate these burdens. Then we we'll talk about some computational experiments. OK, so let's start with the standard CCG algorithm. CCG stands for column and constraint generation. Uh, so we are considering our original problem, the min max mean problem. And we will assume one of the following, uh, either that the uncertainty set is binary or that the value function of the second stage is quasi-convex. This is a standard assumption for CCG to have finite termination. And this, in particular, allows us to write our min-max-mean problem as a problem having a finite uh, uncertainty set. Right? You can replace the uncertainty set by the set of extreme points of the convex cell of uh, your uncertainty set. So we are now allowed, then, to enumerate such points and with an epigraph formulation, we introduce new variable theta that stand for the maximum over all the scenarios of all the best response uh, in all scenarios in this of the second stage. Here, you still have some sort of nested optimization problem, but you can get rid of it by just introducing new variables and constraints for every scenario. So now you have variables yt and a whole set of constraints yt has to belong to the second stage feasible uh, space for every scenario. So this is just a, a standard uh, MILP problem. Uh, the issue, of course, is that this, is, this has a large number of variables and constraints. So what we do to solve this problem in general is we rely on column and constraint generation, which will iteratively generate uh, new scenarios. So at each iteration, we consider a relaxed master problem where only a limited number of scenarios are considered. Uh, we solve this relaxation. We get a point, uh, x star, theta star, y t star for all the scenarios that we considered so far. And then we need to check, is there a scenario that is not in the relaxed master problem such that our decision x star leads to a case where there is no feasible a decision in the second stage? Or is there a scenario in which 
what we estimated so far to be the second stage cost, theta star, is actually worse. Okay, we can do this uh, in uh, the first case by working on a feasibility version of the problem, where we are just uh, minimizing the slack variables. And for the second case, this is just solving the maximum problem. Uh, in this talk, we will not focus on this. We will assume that we have an oracle to solve the max mean problem. Okay, we are solving mean max mean problems, uh, relying on an oracle for solving the max mean problem. You can do this, for instance, by relying on a nested CCG scheme. This was done in uh, Zhao and Zheng uh, 2012, or by Subramanian more recently, 2022. Okay, so let's just assume that we can solve these problems. Uh, well, if we then found such a scenario, what we do is we add this scenario to the relaxed master problem and we repeat, okay? If not, well, this means that X star is a solution of the original two-stage robust problem and we have solved the problem. The objective uh, value of uh, the original problem is then CT X star plus theta star. Okay, so more uh, reference here. So the... the you know, original papers are from uh, Zheng and others from 2013, and you have some other uh, papers uh, on how to solve then the adversarial problem, so the maximum problem. Okay, what are the limitations of these algorithms? So I try to use CCG for solving um, problems with MILP recourses. Uh, so let's say this is a fictitious uh, test bed, but Let's consider 1,000 instances and solve this with CCG. What you will get if you plot the, the empirical cumulative distribution of computation time is this plot, right? So you, you will see that you can solve, say, 80% of the instances rather rapidly. But then no matter how much time you add, the solver will not give you the answer, right? So it's like you can solve 80% of the instances and the rest you can just wait forever to have an answer. So what's going on? Let's have a look at the CCG iteration. So this is the first iteration where we consider no scenario. This is an easy problem. We can solve it in seconds, even less. Then we add one scenario, still a MILP of reasonable size. But then as we add more and more scenarios, of course, this problem becomes large scale. So this is a large scale uh, MILP um, formulation. And actually, this formulation is rather bad, and at least for three reasons. The first reason, well, I just said it, it's large scale, okay? And at every iteration, we add new integer variables and new uh, new set of constraints. The second reason is that the continuous relaxation is actually rather poor. So at the root node, we relax both the first and the second stage decisions, right? So the original problem, which is on the left, is relaxed as the problem on the right, which means in particular that even if in the relaxation you consider a feasible point for the original problem, so a point X, which is an X, it is seen as having a cost which is related to the continuous relaxation of the second stage, which can be arbitrarily bad. So what we are doing here is that we are replacing our objective function by a convex underestimator, which can be arbitrarily bad. Okay, This was the second reason. The third reason is that branching is often poor. So this is another way of seeing the master problem of CCG at every iteration. So we are considering just K scenarios here. And theta actually stands for the maximum over all the optimal values in each scenario that we consider. But this means then that if you branch on a variable yjt, which happens to, uh, well, not realize the maximum, then the objective uh, value will not change. So this means that when you are branching, if you're branching on the wrong decision, this won't have any effect on the lower bound that you're trying to improve. And this is why the uh, hobby or any solver actually takes a lot of time to uh, to solve the problem. Okay, so what can we do about this? And this is actually the main uh, contribution 
uh, of our paper. So recall here that Q stands for the value function of the second stage uh, decision. So you give me X and Xi, I can evaluate uh, the best response that I will do then. Our uh, main contribution is to introduce a new and stronger uh, relaxation for the root node of the master problem in CCG under some structural assumptions. And this uh, relaxation looks as follows. So X, we still consider the continuous uh, relaxation, but then we replace Q not by an arbitrarily bad uh, convex underestimator, but we replace it with the convex envelope of uh, this uh, value function. Okay, so let's see how we do this. So let's go back to the uh, extended formulation. So here I already replaced the uncertainty, the uncertainty set by uh, the set of uh, extreme points of the convex cell of the uncertainty set. And so here we have already a finite maximum. The second step then is to see that the objective function of the inner minimization problem is linear. So I can replace the feasible space by its convex cell. Then with the, same, with the same arguments that we used before, I can write this formulation. So I go through the epigraph formulation and then I introduce new variables and constraints for every scenarios. I get this formulation. Now, this formulation is nice in a sense that uh, now you no longer have any integer restriction on yt. The bad thing, however, is that the constraint that tells you that y has to belong to the convex hull of y of x xi is a non-convex constraint in x y. Right? If if x is fixed, this is nice. Y y has to belong to a convex set. But here, x is free, and so this is non-convex. But then, even if x is fixed, how do you treat that y has to belong to the convex cell? How do you compute it? Okay, we solve the first issue by adding some structural assumption, which is uh, the following. We will assume that uh, the second stage feasible space can be expressed as a set which only depends on the uh, uncertain parameters. And then you have in, this, in a separate uh, manner, the linking constraints with the X variables, and these linking constraints are interdiction constraints. So it means that if X is one, Y should be zero. And if X is zero, Y is free between zero and its upper bound, okay? So this models situations in which here and now you can take decisions so that uh, you, you forbid or allow future decisions, okay? Well, if you have this particular shape in the second stage, it has been shown from uh, Arslan and authors from 2022 that enforcing that Y belongs to the convex cell of Y of X of Xi is exactly the same as requiring Y belongs to the convex cell of Z and then apply the linking constraints. So somehow you can move out from the convex cell the linking constraints between Y and X. So if you replace uh, our hard constraint by these two constraints, you get this formulation. And now this is a nicer formulation, let's say, because now you have that Y belongs to a convex set. This is a convex constraint, but it remains the question of, okay, but how do you treat, how do you compute the convex cell of Z? Um, and we do this by the column generation, and in particular, we consider the danzig worfrey formulation of the convex cell of Z xi. And we um, express it as the uh, set of all convex combination of extreme points and non-negative sum of extreme rays. Okay, So you get this model, which has exponentially many uh, variables. So what we do is column generation, where we would uh, generate new columns on the fly. So at each iteration of CCG, this means that we solve the master problem by a branch and price algorithm instead of the standard branch and cut uh, algorithm. And the pricing problem to generate a new column is simply the minimum of all scenarios of the minimum reduced cost, but this is just a linear function over the set Z, which is simply 
the second stage feasible space without the interdiction constraints. Okay, so this means in particular that first you can uh, exploit parallelism, so you can solve the subproblems uh, in parallel for all the scenarios. You can use uh, an oracle for the deterministic second stage problem. This is just column generation folklore, but you are not uh, obliged to solve to global optimality uh, the pricing problem at every iteration. And also each iteration can be warm started from the previous iteration because you can just uh, keep uh, a pool of column that you already generated in the previous iteration to keep them in the master problem. Okay, so now let's go for some uh, experiments. So we tried uh, this algorithm on two problems. The first one is a uh, facility location problem with uh, facility disruption. Uh, so the setting is as follows. Here and now you have to decide where to open facilities. Uh, the uncertainty is that some facilities will get disrupted, so you cannot use them anymore to serve clients. And in the second stage, you have to serve clients so that you maximize profits. Right? You don't have to serve all the clients, but if you serve one client, uh, you gain pro you gain profit for that. Uh, there is no dispatch, which means that if one facility serves a client, it serves 100% of its demand. Uh, so about the implementation, we use Groby to solve uh, all the uh, involved sub-problems. We turned off uh, heuristics and cuts because our branch and price implementation does not have uh, fine-tuned heuristics or cut generation routines. The branch and price is implemented in C++ using the idle library. And we set a time limit of three hours. The instances that we considered are uh, have 10 facilities and 20 to 30 uh, customers. And gamma, which is the maximum number of facilities that are disrupted, is three or four. And here is the, the result that we obtained. So this is the ECDF, so the empirical cumulative distribution function of computation time over our test set. You have in orange the standard column and constraint generation algorithm. And you can see, so th this is log scaled figure. So you indeed have this shape that I showed you at the beginning of, of the talk. Just we use log scale to actually see something. And you can see that the CCG can solve, let's say roughly 80% of the instances indeed. Uh, and after that, just cannot solve anything. Uh, while the column generation uh, enhanced version. So the yellow one here is able to solve uh, almost all of the instances, like 98% of the instances. Uh, what I didn't say so far is that we only trigger the column generation phase after 60 seconds of Groby struggling in solving the master problem. The reason for this is simple. It's that for certain small uh, problems, it makes no sense to use column generation to solve it, right? So it's only after 60 seconds that we actually start uh, relying on column generation. Uh, then we also developed uh, a heuristic that is based on our work formulation. This is a heuristic to be used in the branch and price algorithm. This is not a heuristic used for pricing, okay? And you can see that the, here we clearly outperform both approaches. Uh, and we are actually able to keep the log linear behavior of the uh, initial CCG uh, algorithm. All right, then we also try uh, our approach on a scheduling problem with uncertain processing times, where here and now you have to accept to perform a set of jobs without knowing exactly their processing times, right? So some jobs will have longer uh, processing times that are originally planned. And in the wait AC phase, uh, well, you will have to perform the jobs or to pay um, a penalty because you are late. Okay. Again, same implementation. The time limit here is two hours. And the size is, uh, that, so the number of jobs is 20 in 25. And gamma, which is the maximum number of jobs which ha will have their uh, processing time increased is five, seven, and nine. Uh, here again, here are the results. So the 
ECDF of computation times. And you can see that uh, the normal, the standard CCG uh, solves again, roughly 80% of the instances. And that when you trigger column generation, so again, after 60 seconds, uh, we are able to uh, solve more instances in less time. Uh, for this uh, particular uh, application, using our heuristic actually makes no difference uh, in the in the computation time. So this means that somehow this is the 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 lower bound that is a problem, not the not the upper bound. Okay, so as a conclusion, uh, I would say that we identified uh, some weaknesses of CCG when you have milk recourse decisions. Uh, we then introduced a stronger model for the mass for the master problem of CCG, and this is the shape of it. We solve it with column generation. Uh, and the key point of this formulation is that then no branching is required on the second stage variables that are integer. Uh, that's it for me. Uh, if you have any questions, I'm happy to answer. <laughs>